Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Widow podcast. Today I want to talk to you about grief coaching. What is it? How does it work? What will it help you with? The questions that I get asked all the time because I think it's it's a relatively new thing, it's a relatively new concept. Um and you know, there's the question of, well, what is it? What does it do? I know I certainly had these questions when I entered the world of coaching myself. So I wanted to hopefully give you a bit more of an insight into grief and loss coaching and and how it can help you. And Also, just to talk a little bit more about my recent training with the wonderful David Kessler. Um, I'm sure you have heard of David Kessler. He is a a very well-known, renowned world expert in the world of grief and loss. He worked very closely with Elizabeth Elizabeth Kubler-Ross and Louise Hay as well. And he has done so much for people in grief. And recently he has created a grief educator training program, which I have completed and it was absolutely incredible. Just incredible in so many ways. And he has, you know, just given us so much depth and understanding into how to really support people through their grief because it's something just as a society we are so ill-equipped to deal with and I don't understand why I'm not sure I ever will understand why because it's the one thing we can all be certain of in life that we are going to experience and you know I think it's also important to acknowledge actually that grief isn't always just something that happens as a result of, of death um, of a person. It, it can be the death of a pet, for starters, but it can also be around the loss of something that once was that no longer is. And that can involve so many things. I mean, how many things do you still have in your life that you had 20 years ago? You know, all those things, all those changes. And it, it's, you know creating this awareness of grief how it presents itself and and how we can learn to live with it because it's not something that goes away you know grief isn't something that gets smaller we get bigger you know we grow we grow through our grief and our losses and and each experience teaches us something there is so much to to be learned from from each loss but it's kind of sometimes we just need someone to help us see those learnings and, you know, help us rebuild that path. So grief coaching. The one thing that grief coaching isn't is, is counselling and therapy. And people often say to me, are you a counsellor? Are you a therapist? I am not a trained counsellor. I am not a trained therapist. I, I cannot help you you know, sort of navigate your way through deeply rooted trauma or or any sort of severe mental health issues, that that's not something I am trained to, to help you with. Um, but what I can do is help you through your grieving process. And there are many, many ways that I can help you do that. And I think, you know, one of the most important things that I do is create space for people, a safe space for for you and for your grief with no expectation, no judgment, no criticism, no shoulds. I meet you wherever you are, wherever you are in your grieving journey, whether you are three weeks or three years, it, 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 you know, it's, it's different for everyone. And we are all going to do this in our own unique way. Because, you know, we are all unique. And we all experience 
life in in our own ways all the time that that's that's what we do and you know I want to help you find your way through this in the best way possible for you and I will meet you wherever you are at and and help you in in that space I want to hold space for everything that is showing up for you a place that you can be completely honest with that you can share your truth in, you know, a a place that you can talk about all the things that you don't feel you can talk to others about, because maybe you feel they don't understand, or you maybe you don't always like the response that you get from others. We often feel like we're a burden, like we're a pain, like we're being boring, that we're going on, that people just don't want to hear it, which by the way, often isn't true, but, I want to hold that space for you. I want to create a relationship that is is deeply connected where you feel understood, you feel heard, you feel seen. A place where I can witness your grief because that is so important in our grieving journeys and is exactly what we need. But it's hard to find it. It's really hard to find people that will meet you where you're at, that will completely accept what you're saying to them, that don't try and fix or find a solution to your problem, and a place where we don't feel judged, criticised or even minimised in in what's showing up for us. And and that's not a a criticism of, of others, by the way, because, again, we're not taught how to deal with people that are grieving. We don't understand, we don't know what to say, we don't know how to show up, we don't know the best ways to support someone. We believe that let's find some positivity in this, let's try and find a solution, because that's what we always do, isn't it? And, And that doesn't necessarily work so much in grief. You know, it's understanding that as much as you feel like you are broken, that you have been shattered into a million pieces, and and it does feel like that you are not broken you do not need to be fixed you need to be loved and nurtured and cherished by others but also by yourself and that's the one thing that we really find so very hard to do that we often don't do we we just do not show ourselves any compassion any understanding that that self-love you know just kindness in words without that sort of inner critic putting us down judging what we're doing what we're saying and and criticizing it all so I, I want to hold that space for you and I want to help you hold that space for yourself and that's something we have to learn how to do it's not something we can just kind of decide to do change change in any thought pattern any behavior pattern in 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 life change takes a long long time to adjust to and it's a process that we have to go through and and when we're trying to implement changes for ourselves in in our own thoughts feelings behaviors whatever it is we're trying to do it takes hard work it takes consistency it takes repetition and you need that accountability to help keep you on track because otherwise we we kind of fall off our our, our kind of path a little bit don't we You, you know but that's okay you know I'm here to kind of bring you back on track to help you sort of see what maybe is pulling you away from from sort of achieving the things you want to achieve it's not about getting it wrong it's not about failing it's about just finding ways that work for you because again we're all different and we will all do this differently there is no right or wrong there's no timeline there's no shoulds it's just helping you discover what works for you and how you can create that that momentum, I suppose, in doing the things that you know will help you through your grief. Because you do know, you do know, you just aren't listening. And that's another thing that we need help with, is listening to our minds, our bodies, our souls. They will guide you. But we've got to, to take time to just stop and listen. We are so driven by what everyone else thinks. You know, what our, our 
people advise us to do, what we hear on the telly, what we read in the books. And, you know, and even I'm, I'm not here to tell you what you should or shouldn't be doing. I'm here to help you create an awareness around what you are doing. And is that working for you? And if it's not, how can we do this in a different way so that what you're doing does work for you? It is taking you closer to where you want to be. You know, and, and that is the sort of the practical side of the coaching that, that I can help you with. Another area that shows up hugely in, in grief is guilt. And I work a lot with clients in, in guilt because it shows up. It shows up in so many aspects of, of our grieving journey and, and in life. Uh, you know, a lot around the stories we tell ourselves, which is, you know, something again that we work on because a lot of the time they're stories. and you know, we are causing ourselves a lot more suffering in our grieving journeys with the stories we tell ourselves. So again, it's highlighting those stories, creating an awareness around them and, and really sort of asking ourselves some big questions around those stories. But with guilt, you know, it's, we would always rather feel guilt than we would to, to feel helpless in a situation because we are not very good at feeling powerless. Like we have absolutely no control over anything. We like to feel that we have control over situations and, you know, things that happen to us. So instead of kind of maybe admitting that we didn't have that control, that we were helpless in it, we would rather feel guilty about it. So again, it's, it's kind of, exploring the guilt, exploring the stories around it, really breaking them down, really sort of diving deep into those stories and helping to, to release ourselves from those stories. You know, that the act of forgiveness is huge and, and, and acceptance of ourselves. It's massive. It's absolutely massive. It takes a lot of courage to be really honest about what's showing up for you and to understand what you are doing to yourself in order to try and to, to change the path that you're going down but it, a lot of it will come back to guilt a lot of the time and, and it's it's allowing ourselves to 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 create freedom and space from that guilt and invite acceptance in again not easy but absolutely possible so also talking about integrating the loss and the future because both are present and both are always going to be present you know and it's how can we create and build a future for ourselves bringing that loss in in a meaningful way in a peaceful way so that ultimately we can we can grieve with more love than pain you know and I think it is definitely something that I have learned to do over the years and it's taken a long time and it hasn't always been comfortable because we we always kind of associate grief with pain and it's like well if I, if I if I'm grieving but I'm not hurting does that mean that I don't love him anymore of course it doesn't again that's another story so it, you know it's it's kind of unlocking everything our thoughts our feelings our emotions our behaviors and and really sort of diving deep into them so that maybe we can just change the narrative we can shift it a little bit to help us to help ourselves in our grieving journey and I want to help you regain control take back some power feel more fulfilled in your life find purpose increase your confidence reduce guilt there's so much essentially we are going to turn the focus onto you and when have you ever done that when do we ever do that we don't especially you know if if you you've been a wife and a mum and you know we we kind of 
dedicate our lives to our families and we we work hard to keep everyone happy and, and keep the family ticking over and and very very well just not often enough do, do you know do we ever stop and kind of think what about me what do I want am I feeling fulfilled in all of this it's, it's all all this meeting my needs and that's not to say that you're not happy or you weren't happy because you were but did you stop to just think? I know I didn't. And I, I can say now, you, you know, Simon died in 2016, so five years ago. And I am far more fulfilled in my life now than I have ever been because I've created that self-awareness. I've invested in me. I understand what I need to make me feel better on the inside. And as a result of that, everything on the outside feels so much better. I feel more in control. I know what I need to do. I know when I start slipping and, and how to pull it back. I'm more resilient. I have grown so much through this experience you know, there has been so much pain, so much pain, but there has also been a lot of good and there is so much that I am grateful for. And I'm, that doesn't mean that I'm glad Simon died, but I can see the good in it. I've turned the focus onto me and this is what I want to help you to do, to understand you you know, so that you can create those strong foundations in life to build from, because you will become more resilient, you will grow through it, it will be easier for you to face life's challenges with when you understand you and what makes you work. You know, it's, it's a very individual approach to grief, grief coaching, it's, it's understanding that there's no timeline and there is no cure OK, it, it, I, I don't have a magic answer. I can't wave a magic wand and make it all better. God, I wish I could. But I can't, you know, but we can become more empowered and we can create a meaningful life that honours our loved one. You, you know, it's kind of not thinking about leaving them behind, forgetting them. It's taking them forward with us. It's, it's kind of creating those ongoing connections being the parts we love most about them and taking that forward with us. Because we wouldn't be who we are without having had that person in our life. They've shaped us. And, and the experience, that their life, their death, that has shaped who we've become. And, and we can show gratitude for that, you know, and, and, and pride and kind of go, do you know what? I like who I've become as a result of having had you in my life, you've taught me all these good things and I want to take those forward. And like I said before, understanding you are not broken. You do not need fixing. You need that love, you need that compassion and you need to find your own unique way through your journey in your way, you know, but with, with kindness and, and understanding what that way is because you, you've got it, you've got it within you. I just need to help you bring that out to understand what that is. Ultimately, we cannot heal in isolation. We cannot heal on our own. We need connection. We thrive on connection as human beings. It, we, it, we just, it's something ingrained deeply within us. And finding that, finding that connection that will have a huge impact on your healing journey, you know? And, and it's, we will find it in ways we don't expect to. Sometimes we will expect our, our friends and family to show up in ways that they, they don't. And that can be quite hurtful. And that's something that we work through. But also we will create new connections. And this is what I do in my groups. You know, I bring people together that are going through something very, very similar. And yes, everyone will do it in different ways. But being surrounded by people that understand what you are going through, the bonds that are created are just insane you know in really quite a short space of time as well people just are drawn to each other because they get it they understand it and it helps them to feel seen heard validated have that grief witnessed you know not feel so alone and so isolated in that journey you know, I, I like to look at it from all angles as well. Grief affects every single area of our life. It's, it's not just a, 
a, a mental health um, issue or, you know, it doesn't just affect that side of us. It affects every corner. You know, we have to look at the mind, the body and the spirit because everything is impacted. You know, our belief systems, all of it comes into account. And, and it's about sort of connecting to yourself which, you know, is just so important because we're often so disconnected from ourselves. Connecting to our friends, our families, our communities. Connecting to life, but also how we can stay connected to our loved one. It's about those continuing bonds. You know, I know your person has died. They are no longer here in the physical sense, but your love still lives on. And it's how can we continue to share that love because that's what we need and, and creating those continuing bonds, continuing to show that love. And that helps us move forward, taking them with us again, without feeling like we're leaving them behind. We will talk about secondary losses because they are endless. It's not just that someone's died and they're missing from our lives, you know, especially with the loss of a life partner. There's so much else that's lost, you know, intimacy finances, holidays, companionship, the future that you thought you were going to have, you know, the memories that you shared with that person that you, you now are the only one that, that has, has that, the co-parenting, there's, there's, there's so, there's so much, the list goes on, it, it just affects everything and that's hard, so there's a lot of losses to process in that as well and one of the biggest ones is that that loss of self who am i where do i fit in anymore what what is my identity if i'm not somebody's wife who am i and 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 you know a lot like myself after simon died i didn't go back to work i was a nurse i was a midwife i was so proud of that you know that was part of my identity that was part of who i was and i didn't go back and and in a lot of respects I'm very fortunate that I didn't have to go back and I could take a couple of years to just be with my children. I and mean, I'm incredibly grateful for that. But it was another loss. And, you know, and if you, you know, sometimes we have to give up our jobs because then it's no longer sustainable. You know, how, how can you go and do night shifts and weekend shifts when you're a solo parent? It's, it, it's difficult. And, and other, other, you know, people work full time, you know, how, how can you work full time when you're a solo parent and you're taking on all the extra responsibility of your person and you've got the children. So this, you know, it just, again, it goes on and it's processing all of those losses as well, but really understanding you, who you are, you know, looking at your past, your present and your future, and, and really sort of trying to think about what you want to create moving forward, looking at triggers, looking at fear. Fear is huge, you know, stress, overwhelm. There's, there's so much involved that shows up for us. But ultimately, responsibility for change lies within the griever. I can inform, reflect and support you on your journey but ultimately the journey is your own and it's helping you take responsibility for that. Again, to, to, to be empowered, to understand how you can take those steps forward, how you can create something truly meaningful and, and fulfilling for you so that you can feel love and joy and peace in your heart again, taking your person with you understanding everything that they taught you in their life and their death turning your pain into purpose you know there is pain there's a lot of pain like I say but there is also good and I, I want to help you find ways to take the love forward to see the good because if we are always focused on the pain that's all we will see and sometimes we just have to shift our focus a little bit. Give ourselves permission to find the good in it. 
you know, in my groups, we talk about grieving positively or even finding positives in our grief. And I can see people cringing when I use the word positive initially. But, you know, by the end of the course, that they, they've become more comfortable with it because we talk about it more and we make it acceptable. and We give ourselves that permission. And it's kind of going, do you know what? There is some good. There is some good in the situation you find yourself in. But it's you've, you've got to want to find it. You've got to want to see it. There's got to be that desire, you know, to see good in things and understanding that finding positives, finding something good, you know, creating joy in your life, love, you know, not always in a romantic sense, but however you want that to show up for you, that doesn't in any way diminish your love or your loss for your person. It takes nothing away from you. You know, it's not an either or situation. You know, Grief and joy and your future and happiness, they are two kind of opposing truths that sit in the same space in any one given moment. And it's understanding that it's not black and white, it's not right and wrong. It's almost like everything becomes bittersweet. But where are you going to focus? Are you always going to focus on the bitter? Are you going to, you know, every moment in your life that that could be good, that could show up as a positive. You know, we often withdraw ourselves from that and go, oh no, I can't, I can't feel that. I can't allow myself to feel that. That's really bad. What will people think of me? I can't be seen to be having fun or enjoying myself. They, they might think I no longer grieve for my person. I no longer love my person. Do I think that? Do I think that I no longer love or grieve for my person? And again, it's stories. It's stories that, that we can work on. You're going to grow through this in ways you can't even begin to imagine. You know, when I look at my life and my journey and I'm no different to you and the path it's taken me down, it is unbelievable. And I would never, ever have dreamed that anything in my life was possible after Simon died. None of it. I would never have believed it. I couldn't see it. I couldn't see anything. I couldn't see any hope for the future. And that's OK. You know, it's okay if that's the space that you're in, but you won't stay in that space forever. You won't always be there. Nothing is permanent. Every single moment of every single day, we are making choices. And I want to help you make choices that work for you, not against you. To see the choices that you are making, to really understand them and maybe change them if you want to. But ultimately, to see how utterly incredible you are as a person, that what you are dealing with is so huge and you are doing it so well. You know, and, and it's, it's making the choices to move towards our healing and not to stay stuck in the pain. And like I say, it takes a long time. It's not an overnight decision we can make. It takes a lot of hard work. It takes commitment. It takes courage. And it takes support. And that's what I want to do. I want to walk alongside you for however long you need me to. You know, I want to just hold your hand, guide you, support you, nurture you, nourish you, empower you. Because you don't have to suffer any more than you need to in this journey. There's so much you can do, so much you can do to take back that power, to feel more in control, to grieve more positively. And I'm not saying it'll take away all your pain and make everything better. We all know that's not possible. But I can help you lean into what's showing up for you. Stop beating yourself up. Be a lot kinder to yourself, enrich your connections with you, with life, with those around you and with your loved one and help you take those steps forward towards a much brighter future. Because it's out there and it's waiting for you and I want to help you do that. So I hope that's answered some of your questions. Um, you know, just a little bit about grief coaching and, and what it can do for you and, and how it works. But just remember, it is always about you. This is your journey. This is, this is helping you to do your journey in the best way that you need to do that journey. 
because it's going to be yours, uniquely yours. And there's something incredibly powerful in that. I shall leave that with you. Um, I hope it has helped, like I say, and I shall look forward to seeing you on the next episode of the Widow Podcast. Thank you very much. <laughs>